yeah, as Sam said, there's a vast list of co-authors in this paper, and several of us are around here in this room, so if you feel like chatting about it, just hit one of us up. So this uh, piece of work is part of a larger endeavor, a larger research endeavor, which is the uh, Everest Expedition, which aims at verifying parts of the HTTPS stack. And specifically, we've been concerned with TLS. So HTTPS, of course, is what you use when you want to securely communicate with a website, and TLS is the protocol that is specifically concerned with uh, establishing the secure connection between you and icfp.org, for instance. Uh, there's two interesting bits in TLS itself. There's the protocol layer, which I won't talk about much. It's mostly about setting up parameters, saying hello to the server, and agreeing on how exactly you want to communicate. And the interesting bit for this talk is the record layer, which contains a lot of the actual cryptography that is being run. And uh, in order to illustrate our methodology of low-level programming in FSTAR, I'm going to focus on some of these cryptographic algorithms, and I'm going to illustrate how we can program low-level style algorithms in FSTAR. So my running example throughout this talk is going to be the Polyon Theory 5 algorithm. Polyon Theory 5 is a MAC message authentication code, and the intent of it is that you have a key in two parts, K and M, that allows you to compute some MAC of a message. The key is used once, and the MAC is cryptography, cryptographically secure because an attacker cannot forge a, another, another message that would have the same MAC. The probability that an attacker would forge another message that has the same MAC is negligible. So that sounds great. It's an important part of what we need to use to communicate with a secure server. I think we can reasonably assume that it's a, it's a useful cryptographic instruction. And the way that it works is with a lot of math. So it operates in a finite field, and it evaluates a polynomial in the finite field of characteristic 2 to 1 30th minus 5. It's a prime number. And the way that you compute this like, cryptographic operation is that you evaluate the polynomial using the key. And you do an addition with another part of the key using parts of the message, the words of the message, the WI, as the coefficients of your polynomial. There's some very strong cryptographic arguments that this makes sense. Uh, please ask some of my more cryptographically inclined co-authors. The interesting bit is that, of course, you can do these computations using arbitrary precision arithmetic and then do a finite modulo, and this will give you the correct result. But where things get interesting is that if you don't want this to be horrendously slow, then you want to optimize your code to make it fast. So for instance, a lot of the standard implementations for this operation are written in C for performance. And for performance, instead of using the, I don't know, GMP arbitrary precision library, what they do is that they split the numbers in this field, which occupy at most 130 bits, into three words uh, that fit in 64-bit registers. They're called limbs, and they use one identity when they recursively evaluate the polynomial, they use the fact that 2 to the 1 30th is actually the same thing as 5 in the field, and that they can transform these multiplications here into a series of a plus 4, a plus b, which you can efficiently implement with an addition and a shift instead of paying the cost of a very expensive multiplication. So this field has been carefully crafted to lend itself to very optimized, fine-tuned implementations in C. Well, as you may have guessed by now, these implementations have numerous bugs. Uh, there's buffer overflows, high severity CVE, which is like as bad as it gets, but there's also even correctness bugs where the people thought that they were doing like a super optimized implementation and actually they got, say, the carry multiplication wrong and the thing doesn't even get, uh, give the correct result. And that's where verification comes in, naturally. So, this screenshot is not only intended to demo our great Emacs mode for FSTAR, but also to show that it's actually very simple to specify what this very, like, what this polynomial is in just 17 lines. That's exactly what I said on the slides before. You take the prime to be 2 to the 1 30th minus 5. Elements in the field are elements that are within, you know, that are positive and smaller than the prime. The field addition is regular addition modulo the prime number. The field multiplication is the multiplication modulo the prime number. And then the recursive polynomial evaluation is defined here in six lines as, you know, an addition followed by a multiplication as I was talking about. 
before. This is specification. No one will ever want to use this as you know, the actual code to perform the operation, but our methodology is as follows. Um, this handwritten diagram, courtesy of Cédric Fournet, you can ask him for uh, questions. So what we do, what our methodology does, is that we're going to do the exact same implementation tricks that these people do in C, and we're going to do them in F star. So this is a subset of F star called low star. So there's a lot of low level operations. There's masks. It talks about limbs. It talks about buffers. It talks about bit shift, bitwise operations. So this is all low level code that we have embedded in F star. So that's the left hand side. But the advantage is that being in F star, we can prove a variety of things on this low level code. And for that, we can use all of F star. So for instance, we have memory safety pre and post conditions that say that our low level style arrays that are in um, our low level style arrays are live. So there is liveness conditions. There's bounds conditions here to guarantee that our low level arrays uh, indices are within bounds. And there's more importantly the math spec. And that says that the low level code that you're seeing has been tied in to the spec that I was showing on the previous slide. So that low level code that reasons in terms of buffers, arrays, bit shifts, etc., really does implement the concise high level mathematical spec that you saw on the slide before. And what happens with our methodology, and that's the essence of it, because this code, once you remove all the proofs, is really super low level code, well then this code can be trivially translated to C. And what you get on the right hand side is C code that really is the same code as the F-star code on the left side, except that all the proof, all the refinements, all the pre and post conditions, all of these have been removed to only leave the low level operations. You can see that all of this has disappeared. The GT mask, EQ mask are here exactly. These three bitwise operations are exactly here. And this update three has been inlined to three C assignments. And that's the essence of our methodology. So to give you a little bit of an overview of that subset of F star, which we call low star, our motto really is high level verification for low level code. So the programmer by opting in into that low star subset gets to use a special F star effect that models the C memory model that talks about the stack and the heap. The programmer may use some low level libraries to talk about what a C array is and what a C struct is. So while still in F star, we have combinators libraries that allows the programmer to get C loops at the end of the pipeline. The programmer can use as much meta programming as they want, as long as the program is first order. We also have support for data types with the caveat that being extracted as value types, their performance may be unpredictable. And for proofs and specs, L, the programmer may use all of F star. The programmer is free to use sequences, lists, sets, things, anything they want really in proofs because all of the proofs are erased. And uh, once you have erased everything, you have a first order program that can be extracted to see. So our motto really is that the code is low level, but the verification is not. And you can perform all sorts of proofs on this low level code. What we've done is mostly memory safety, functional correctness, and crypto games. So that's a big blurb of code, but what I want to convey is that we have a special effect for functions that respect the C memory model. This one says that uh, if your function is within that low level effect, it preserves the stack structure. So we model in F star the C stack as a series of stack frames with a tip. And what the equal domains predicate says is that the tip remains the same and that the function is not allowed to allocate in any of its colors frames. And a function that doesn't push more frames than it pops and that does not allocate into any of the pre-existing frames is a function that can be trivially translated to a C function. Similarly for buffers, which are really stack allocated arrays. What we do is uh, we model the fact that indices must be within bounds and that the buffer must be live by the time you access it. And what our proofs show is that it is sound whenever you see buffer of int at the F star level to replace it with int star in C. That every time you see index bi at the F star level, it is sound to replace it with b bracket i in C. And that's the essence of our methodology. We have a formalization that is roughly structured as follows. We uh, base ourselves 
on an earlier formalization of F-star uh, from Papal 2017 called EMF-star. And out of EMF-star, we carve out that subset called Le star you, We erase everything. We erase the proofs, the specifications, the refinements, and what we get is a first-order EMF-star. We model this one as lambda Le star which is our core lambda calculus for that small first-order subset. And we show that programs, uh, the semantics of programs are preserved from lambda Le star to C star, which is an ideal model of C, then on to Comsert's C light. Once we're at the Comsert C light level, then we can dump a set of C files and we can rely on an existing verified compiler such as Comsert or any other commercial compiler such as GCC, Clang, or uh, Microsoft's compiler. These are at, uh, at the moment handwritten proofs. Another really interesting result that I want to emphasize in this talk is that our programs enjoy a degree of side channel resistance and this is something that we've modeled. The, uh, the core idea is that we want to guard ourselves against memory and timing side channels. So for instance you have like some secret key and there are some operations that you absolutely cannot do with your secret key. So you cannot do if secret key equals zero because then the adversary might learn things by observing the timing difference between your then branch and your else branch. Similarly, you cannot use that secret to index into an array because the cache line might be in a different state and then the adversary could learn some things about the value of your secret key. So what we do is a mechanism that's pretty familiar to you, I assume, we use an abstract type. And because the type is abstract, the type for our secrets is abstract, we can control what operations we allow on the secret data. So what we have is limbs, which I mentioned before, and limb is our secret type. And the user, the programmer, can leverage the fact that limbs really are integers, but only at the proof level. That's what the ghost means. The code, the actual code that runs, is not allowed to make use of that fact. And I said that you cannot test the equality of a secret. However, what, we can, what you can do is use the uh, carefully crafted, cryptographically approved EQ mask function that takes two limbs and returns to you a third limb that is still a secret with the refinement that you can leverage only in proofs, that it's all zeros if the two are different, or two, uh, all ones if the two are equal. And by construction, because it's an abstract type and because there's only a few of such functions, then we can derive that uh, the programmer can use a limb for branching or array accesses. The way that we model this is uh, by modeling trace events as part of our reduction semantics, read events, write events into arrays, branching on the then or the else branch. Of course, this does not rule out all side channels, but it guards ourselves against the whole class of side channels. And we have a type index relations that says that two expressions are related as long as they only differ on subterms that are at secret types. And what our theorem says is that when these two expressions reduce, they reduce with traces that are equal, meaning that the traces are not affected by the actual values of the uh, secrets. This uh, set channel preservation result only goes up to concert. Then if we want to keep it all the way to assembly, we'd have to use some other pre-existing tools such as validation of the uh, generated assembly. We wrote a tool that performs all of this extraction pipeline to C called Kremlin because there's ML in it. And the motto is that it's a compiler from F star to readable C. And that is tremendously important because we want people to be able to integrate that C code into their existing software and review it. And uh, one of the key insights in Kremlin is that we want to get rid of modularity, which is great for proof, in order to allow a lot of optimizations at the C level. So for instance, Kremlin will do a lot of monomorphization and inlining, but it will even go further. If you have a set of nicely separated F star functions that are great, that have very small pre and post conditions, they are all going to be recombined into a big C function to allow the C compiler to trigger all the intra-procedural optimizations. Similarly, your whole F star proof development may be spread out across several modules, but we all recombine them into a single C file, and we mark all of the functions that are private to this file as static inline so that the C compiler can optimize even further. The amount of C code that we've generated is about 50,000 lines. And the good news is we get great performance out of this. So the example that I took to illustrate my uh, talk is part of a larger 
cryptographic library called HackerStar, High Assurance Cryptographic Library, that implements a wide variety of algorithms, and that, once extracted, gives you about 7,000 lines of C code for 23,000 lines of FSTAR code. And the great news is that the performance is about the same as the existing C code, and more importantly, that people have been very happy with our code, and as of last Sunday, the Curve 2551L algorithm from Echostar has been integrated into the Firefox web browser. We have a uh, companion paper that focuses on the more cryptographic aspects of this work. Here's a uh, performance chart that we're all very proud of. It's uh, a X25519 multiplication, and the Echostar version is about twice as fast as OpenSSL. This is the ChaCha20 stream cipher. And it shows that we're in the same ballpark and actually a tad bit better than uh, equivalent OpenSSL algorithm. This is a slightly more frustrating chart that shows the OpenSSL assembly version that is still much faster than our version. And this uh, striped chart is the HyperStar vectorized version, which uh, exposes compiler intrinsics at the FSTAR level so that you can use uh, vector operations on your data. So what that graph says is that when we compare our C code against their C code, we're equivalent or better. But when they use assembly, well, then we have a hard time bidding that. So uh, we have another tool called Veil, Verified Assembly Language for Everest, that tries to close this performance gap by using a specific language to verify your assembly code, too. Uh, was presented at Usenix uh, and had a Distinguished Paper Award. And finally, I would like to um, go back to uh, my earlier slide where I was talking about the TLS record layer. And we have recently declared victory on the record layer part of TLS. And it's all verified and used in HackerStar. It has a full cryptographic games and proof development. And there's also a paper talking about specifically the cryptographic proofs that we've performed on the constructions. This is AAD, the um, essential construction that's at the core of the record layer, and it shows that we have, again, comparable, comparable or even better performance than OpenSSL C version versus C version, and that naturally for the uh, assembly version, OpenSSL is still faster. Our future plans are mostly to extend HackerStar with more algorithms, uh, especially the p-curves. We want to continue our work with Mozilla to integrate more of our uh, C code into their NSS library. For MeTLS, uh, we want to finish lowering the protocol layer into low star. The protocol layer is not yet into low star. And another area that we're actively working on is verified low-level parsers, which have historically been a huge source of bugs. It is all on GitHub. It is all open source. We all take pull requests. So if you are curious and want to give it a go, feel free. Thanks.